Hello Internet and welcome to what I hope will be a useful video for some people out there. I am Pete Mitchell and this is a video about how I make Vaporwave. Um, I'm not going so far as to call this a general how to make Vaporwave video. It's just the process that's kind of worked for me through trial and error. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So one of the first things you run into when trying to make this sort of music is, at least for me, one of the biggest challenges is finding samples. Um, it just, I don't know, it seems that when you, you start digging around, you just can't find anything that works quite as well as what other producers are doing. I don't know if it's a little imposter syndrome or what, but that's always been something I've sort of struggled with. So uh, there's a few different methods I like to use for finding material. One of it, one of them, and probably the most useful is just my own personal music history of just stuff I've listened to throughout my life. The just random phases I've gone through, different genres, different bands and whatnot. Um, I find that to be the best source of good music that not necessarily has been sampled to death. Um, you know, if you start getting into, you know, 80s and 90s music, Japanese funk, smooth jazz, stuff like that. I mean, that's kind of been done. It's still great sources of sample material. Don't get me wrong. I still use that stuff plenty. But when you want to differentiate yourself a little bit or kind of, kind of step outside the box, um, some of the more... Uh, innovative to me tracks that I've done uh, or ones I've been happiest with have been tracks where I've sort of broken out of that a little bit. Uh, so like everyone else, uh, I think that YouTube is probably the first place to go when you're just looking for raw inspiration and you can just get on a playlist start going through for hours and just searching for stuff everybody knows this nothing new here but one of the things i ran into which was sort of a pain was the idea of how would something sound once you actually made a vaporwave track out of it now you can listen to something and kind of have an idea but without really actually importing it into your daw slowing it down adding reverb etc it's sometimes not super easy to tell. So uh, I found this Chrome extension and everything I mentioned here, I'm gonna link down below. So don't worry about keeping up now. But this Chrome extension here, it's called uh, Pitch Shifter, HTML5 Video and Audio Effects. And it is what you expect. You can change the playback rate and the pitch, which is super great for being able to just audition tracks and quickly see it, you know whether something is even worth pursuing as a sample material so uh, because I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube I'm not going to use like a regular commercial song so I'm actually using one of my own tracks that was on a recent compilation album for the Seiko Mart first anniversary compilation so I'm just going to start playing this And so if I turn this on, you can see now I'm kind of doing this to a song that's already Vaporwave, but you get the idea. So you can go all the way down to half the rate, and you can go, I don't know if it's a full octave or not, but you can go definitely lower than you would need to. And then you can also go into semitone mode, which is handy if you're working in that mode. So that's when in, that's been one of those game changers for me. I can pull up a playlist for a particular genre of music, set that to kind of typical settings where I'm basically pitching everything down and slowing it down by about 30%, um, which I find is a great place to start and then just go through tracks and sometimes songs will just jump out at you that wouldn't necessarily otherwise. So anyhow, long story short, that's kind of been one of the best ways I've 
used to find samples. Now, as far as actually getting the audio file, um, I, that's an exercise I will leave up to the to the viewer. There are some ways that are not completely legal, and my personal issue, I mean, it's vaporwave. We're at the end of the day, we're stealing a lot of samples to begin with, so I'm not going to get upset about that. Um, but it's audio quality. Uh, I forget the exact numbers, but apparently YouTube will en encode audio at a at a lower bit rate or something than than you would normally want to work with. And for some of the lo-fi stuff, it's fine. Um, my first two albums have plenty of stuff that was uh, ripped directly from YouTube, but it's something to keep in mind. Uh, depending on what I'm doing now, if I have a track where fidelity is important to me, I'll actually go find a legitimate copy. Um, some people buy CDs, but I don't even know if I own a CD player anymore, to be honest. Um, so it's iTunes or Amazon because both of them will give you like a plain MP3 file and you can import that directly into your DAW. So um, beyond the YouTube route, uh, something else I have found is good. It, and this is how I used to audition every uh, sample. I would do the YouTube download and then bring it into Audacity. Um, and for this particular video, what I'm using is this track here called Synergy Cruiser by uh, Kevin McLeod. Now, this is all, um, it's a public domain track, so it's fine to be using it for this. Um, and I'll add a link to this site as well. It's actually a pretty good source. There's quite a bit of music out here, uh, all different genres. Um, so... It's good for inspiration or, I mean, you can actually just use this stuff and it's one of the few sources of samples where you won't technically be um, infringing on copyrights. So it, it's good to have. So, um, oh, I did not mean to click that. Uh, so I've got it here and we're just gonna bring it into Audacity. Now, one thing I like to do is use um, a chain and I'll show you the chain here. I created one called Vaporize, and it slows down by 30% and then adds reverb. So it's a real simple way just to see, you know, a, a rough look at how a track is gonna sound. So we're gonna do apply chain, apply to current project. And you know what? I'm actually gonna let you listen to the actual track first because that might be helpful. <laughs> So you get the idea. It's kind of a like a happy, upbeat, electronic song. Um, seems like it could be interesting source material. Uh, now, I will say that unlike some other tutorials I've seen on this subject, I did not go ahead and build a complete track ahead of the video. I kind of wanted this to be a bit stream of consciousness. Uh, a little trial and error, I think that might actually be more useful, uh, or it could just make the video more tedious. I guess we'll see at the end of it. So anyhow, I've got the track here on Audacity, and I've applied that chain to it. So we've slowed it down. We've applied our reverb. Now let's see what we have. <laughs> through all of it in that mode but as you can see it really uh it really changed the tone of the entire song and it's kind of what vaporwave does so i think we ended up with a good sample here so knowing now that i actually want to use it what i'm going to do is actually undo that and now just change the speed because i don't want that reverb on there we're going to do that within reaper so 
change speed. We're going down 30%. Um, I always start with that because I, when I first got into making Vaporwave, there's actually a pretty good video. Um, and I forget the, the, the person's name who made it, but I'll link the video down below. And he did a, a tutorial in Audacity about basically recreating um, Lisa, uh, Lisa Frank 420 Modern Computing by Macintosh Plus. And 30% was the rate used, and that's kind of just been my rule of thumb ever since. Um, for some tracks, I'll go a little higher, some lower, just depending on what it needs, but I find that's a great place to start. And for this track, it seems uh, to be working, so... Now, I will also point out that I am doing the speed change here on Audacity. There are some where I'll actually bring it into my DAW and actually change the speed and pitch independently. But I find that if I want those, if this pitch is fine, you know, matching it to the speed like it is, um, I feel like the sound I get out of Audacity is a little better than any of the DAWs I've used. Some of the pitch plugins just end up being a little grainy. Um, I was working with a track earlier where I ran into that and I actually ended up throwing away a couple hours worth of work and then just re-exporting it through Audacity to bring it in um, just to start with what I felt was smoother audio. So we've got that. We're gonna export the audio. Um, uh, you can see our export this here. Great. I guess we're doing a wave file. Fine. So now we're done with Audacity for now. Oops. I could click now, and now we're going to bring this in. So sitting at about five minutes um, general I guess philosophy when I'm working on a track is I th and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it there's some tracks that doing nothing but slowing down and adding reverb completely changes the the tone and texture and it makes it a new song without any additional work being needed what I like to do though um, is I try to kind of make this the song more interesting. I try to do a bit more editing, a bit more rearranging. One thing I'll I like to do sometimes is maybe take the first chorus, move it to the beginning, and maybe just the first verse never happens. Um, and then you know maybe take a bridge, stick it somewhere where it shouldn't go, and have it repeat a few more times while throwing in some other effects. Um, and that's, you know, there's different schools of thought. I like a little, uh, I like more of a glitchier track when I work on it. I like that, um, I guess they call it deconstructed sound um, as opposed to just sort of the, the smoother edits. So that said, uh, let's get into editing this thing. So we're gonna listen to just a little bit of the beginning. <laughs> After this, we're getting a, I think this loop is about to start over. So I think this is a good place. Um, thing I do like to do is kind of take that intro loop, maybe stretch it out a little bit longer and kind of add some variance to it. Maybe, you know, some pitch shifting, maybe I'll do a low pass filter. Um, and yeah, that's and that's what I actually will try here. So let's see. Actually, where's a snare? So we're gonna zoom in. Now for this particular track, since we're not gonna be adding any other samples or drum loops or instrumentation, I kind of don't care what my BPM is and these markers are just arbitrary. We're just working with waveforms. 
Um, for a better example about how to do that stuff, Iacon has some amazing tutorials which uh, are going to make this thing look like kindergarten, but uh, I'll link those down below as well if you want more of a, um, an example of what somebody who really knows audio and music production. Uh, me, I'm just, I'm a sample editor. Uh, so um, you're not going to get any of that here. So I'll link that below. But um, yeah, I just know that that's why I'm not, I'm, I'm indifferent to what my BPM or anything like that is. So I think this is going to be a good place to split it. So we're going to right click, uh, split item at cursor. I'm just going to drag that up and just, what happened here? Oh, zoom in here. I'm going to stick those back together. We're just going to see if these loop like we might want them to. There's a little bit of a beginning part here. And I think that added a little bit of a... Um, that's a slight millisecond or two gap that we don't want. So I'm going to knock that out. There we go. So we're going to repeat this one actually three times. It's a little bit of a long loop. So to not make it boring, we will be adding some about uh, variations. Um, one thing I like for an intro, and it's a little played out, but I like it, so I don't care, is I like adding a filter. Uh, so we'll go through here and see what we're going to use. Um, this is, a, I guess, a software version of Moog's four pole filter. So we'll try that. And so I'll just let you see what that sounds like playing with it here. So that's cutting out the high end. And then you can, or that's cutting out, yeah. So you could do this. And then you can see that cuts out all the lows. It only lets the, the highs pass through. That's the name. We're going to go with the low pass because I like that. You don't want to completely drown it out. I think the trick to doing a low pass filter transition like this is when the song starts, you don't want the listener to necessarily know there's any part of the, the sound spectrum missing. But then when it comes on and that filter is removed, it's, they hear the rest of it. And it, I don't know, the, for me at least, I always like that effect. So set that here I think that's good and now we're gonna do an automation on that and that's gonna be our cutoff so you can see this is it's at about 62 percent which is where we've set it before so now we need to find a good place for that to come in somewhere between here and here is a good place to do the transition so I think maybe here I'll create that new point yeah I want it like while this like synth hit is going on so that while that sounds going on our whole sound the whole sound of the song will just open up so we're gonna create that new point um, yeah, that should be it. Let's see how that sounds. And so this transition is fine. That's a linear transition, but you do have options here. So let me select that point and you can do select shape. We'll do a fast end. So it kind of goes up exponentially and I find that release is just a little more pleasing to the ears. So. All right, I like that. So 
we need to do something else so we're not boring people to death with this repetition here. Uh, I like to do pitch shifts. Um, I, you'll hear it in a lot of my music, so uh, it's something I do. I like it, and I'm just going to do it here too. Uh, let's see. So we're going to use the built-in in pitch. And as we're playing... So you can kind of create this neat feeling of kind of unease as you gradually are shifting the, the pitch. Um, so that's what we're going to do here is we're working with sense. So as we start this next loop, we're going to create a point. And we'll go all the way down to here. And this will be where we release it, the seams. So we're going to dip down and then kind of gradually just kick it back up. So let's listen to this. Yeah, I think that's good. I might even make that a little more dramatic. And again, we're gonna do that uh, fast end on the for the shape. So we'll hear that release. <laughs> So I think that's good, um, and then we'll have one version, the last version of this loop will just be a as plain as it can be. We're not going to add any extra transitions or effects, so let's go ahead and see how this sounds. The, you know, let's get in the next part and see what we want to do. same there so I'll zoom out with our waveform and just see if there's any interesting parts that stand out if something's going on here Since this is not like a, a normal song with um, you know chorus, verse, and bridge and whatnot, you're not going to get a you know those normal transitions. That presents a little bit of a challenge, but we'll figure something out. So I think we're going to keep that mostly intact. And we might just start chopping out some of the middle just to get rid of some of the repetition. Um, again, my whole goal when I do a song is to create something sort of interesting. Um, and so too much repetition, uh, especially when it's built into this, the original song, I, I don't like that. So I'll end up removing a lot of the original track and just sort of focusing on the areas that I know I can enhance. So we might end up doing that here. So let's see if maybe this from our original intro loop, if there's somewhere else we want to jump that to. That was a really 
there was really nice distinct uh, transitions here, so it's actually going to make it easy to find another point to jump to. So let's see what's going on here. that actually let's see so actually we're gonna come to we're gonna jump directly here so let's cut it there and because we I might want that later I'm gonna put it on its own track and mute it then squeeze this up and see how it sounds on that transition. Alright, I like that. But I think it'd be cool to have some sort of effect come in here because that's kind of a big transition and maybe just make that a little more distinct. Uh, we'll give a phaser a try. So... that so I think we're gonna do an automation there and let me set the wet value so we're actually gonna set it all the way down oops come on now get there and we're gonna create a new point and something we're going to want to have come in pretty quick. Let's see. Right there, we kind of hit a new transition. I think that's a good time to bring the bring the phaser out sometime before there. Let's see where that's where that really is. <laughs> up so the transition's more immediate. And if you've listened to any of my music, you know I'm a sucker for that stutter skipping effect, so we're going to do one of those here. So we're just going to, whatever this sound is, we're going to use it. There are some plugins that will let you do this, um, that will do some skipping, but I actually like to do the, the cuts uh, myself, just to have a little more control over 
exactly where it happens and the timing of it and whatnot. Uh, but if you're just happy with having a, a random CD style skip thrown in, uh, there are plugins that'll do that. So uh, that said, we're going to split my cursor. <laughs> So kind of working backwards. That will stay there. Oops, what did I just do? I just lost my place. Sorry about that. So that's going to stay there. down so it's gonna be we'll have a couple oops, a couple quick stutters and then one that's a little longer I'll actually glue these together. So I can just drag it at once, and let's see how that sounds. Yeah, it's all right. Kind of just throws in this little bit of abruptness. Um, it's something Vectroid does in a lot of her music, and I'm, I always really enjoyed that. Maybe it's because her music, of course, with the Floral Shop and all the other work she did with early vaporwave is the first stuff i listened to that still to me is sort of the sound um but yeah it's something i like to throw in there so there we go we have that um and we'll just go go on and see what's left <laughs> time for our good friend the tape delay so there's a few different ones I think I'll try the built I think I'm trying to stick with the built-in ones here so we'll see how this sounds <laughs> here and I don't know I think here's a good place to start and so what I like to do with that is kind of do this gradual sloping of it so you're not even necessarily where it's happening at first it's just you start noticing the kind of the echo effect And then I like to cut it out before it's right at the point where it's almost unlistenable. Like it's basically this cacophony of just echoes of echoes. So I don't know if you can hear my dog barking in the background. I apologize for that. Let's see how this sounds. <laughs>
actually gonna cut out a chunk because I think we're about done. So I don't want to just leave the track as is running. Um, here and uh, if you've not made music like this before uh, this is actually an uncharacteristically easy track to edit um, electronic music tends to be that way because you know either DAWs or sequencers tend to be very very discreet as far as where you know how timing is set up so your transitions uh, are usually really easy to find and very consistent when you're trying to do something like jazz where there's instruments and maybe a regular timing and whatnot, it becomes harder. So something to keep in mind. So we're going to split that out and let's go find an earlier transition right past our delay dropout. Actually, that might have been good. And we'll call this So the reason I'm not going into a ton of detail about what I'm doing in my DAW as far as the actual things go is I'm trying to keep this as um, a little more higher level conceptual because while I'm using Reaper, I know a lot of people are going to be using other DAWs. Um, Ableton uh, is very popular. FL Studio is super popular. I own both of them and I honestly, I just prefer Reaper feel like for doing waveform editing like this, it kind of gives you, I, f I feel like this workflow is easier for me. Um, FL Studio was right out for me. Like it's great for a loop based workflow, but for just like a long timeline of audio elements like this, especially when I'm not adhering to necessarily a particular BPM or um, you know measures or anything like that. It, um, I don't think it's ideal for that. This is pretty much happy to let you ignore that. So I'd recommend it. Um, you can get the trial version for free and I think it's like a 30 or a 60 day trial edition, but it's full featured. There's nothing disabled. And after your trial period is up, there's actually, it. nothing gets disabled. There's just a nag screen. So you, can use this for free forever but 60 bucks if you can afford it i'd buy it it's a great piece of software um so i digress let's get back to this so let's make sure this transition was good i think that's good From this perspective, I, as far as chopping the song, I think we're going to call this done. We are we are leaving a bit here at the end, but there's some interesting stuff going on there, and I don't know that I, I can necessarily add to it. So we'll just go ahead and leave it alone. Um, it Sometimes it feels like you're not necessarily doing enough. You're just playing someone else's song slower. But honestly, that, you know, like I said earlier, that that alone can be enough. If you look at some of the more popular producers out there, um, like look at Waterfront Dining, most of their stuff is pretty much that. It's uh, amazing sample selection, minimal processing, and it's kind of whole songs. Um, that's not all of it, but you know, 
they're considered a, a very good producer. Their music's really popular. I'm a huge fan, personally. Um, so the fact that they don't have to beat the hell out of their samples to create something, I think is a testament to sometimes more is less, or less is more when when making music like this. So we'll call that done. Now, there's something you'll probably notice that is uh, very absent, and that is reverb. So I could, and I will just to show you. Uh, now the reverb I actually like is the uh, Stanford reverb. I don't know why, I, you know, you see I have a few of them. I just like this one. Um, when you gonna, I start with Cathedral, uh, and we'll just see how that goes. this now so listen why disable it I feel like the reverb and this is only something I've recently started doing your reverb ends up kind of muddling out a lot of the sounds and you lose some of that nice clarity and this is a really sharp clear song um, so to strike a balance there what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a new track with our samples and so it's going to be the same thing and we're actually going to put the reverb on that and the nice thing is because we've got this clear sample up here and we can mix accordingly, we can really, really go nuts on the reverb on this track. So we'll do that. I think this is the most insane reverb here. So we'll try that out. that reverb I think that's good um, one last thing we're gonna do is add a little stereo separation uh, again I'll link it below but one of the VSTs um, I don't even know what the hell that stands for basically these monthly 
uh, kind of tips and tutorial articles that get written on r slash making vaporwave great subreddit by the way if you're into this stuff and you're not reading that you, you need to subscribe now um, it was one I read kind of when I was starting to make vaporwave and the tip was don't do everything on the center channel and start really you know panning your tracks out so especially when I'm doing something where I've got the same audio um, I like to do somewhere around 15 16 percent and yes so you know you have a little bit of stereo separation and you know somebody may not even notice it unless they're wearing headphones or have speakers that are actually spaced out but um, in case you are I'll actually let you listen to this and see this is a better spot So the fact that you've got this pitch drop more in the left channel than the right, and I'm wearing headphones now, I can really, I can hear that difference. I think that creates sort of a, um, like a dissonance, a little bit of uneasiness. And that's another thing I like in Vaporwave and I, I like to create sometimes. So um, I think I'm gonna call this track done. So. Thanks for watching, and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the video with uh, this playing, and so you're you're welcome to stick around and listen to it. Otherwise, uh, you can go about your day. But yeah, here we go. Thanks a lot, everyone.